Hey there, and welcome to MTG Meow, Magic Enjoyed Other Ways. Meow. I'm Scott. And I'm Abby. And today we're taking a look at a new set, Ooh. Attorney at White Run. Ah. It's created by Herzy Kersey. If you want to check it out, yep, follow the yep. link in the description. It's kind of an interesting title, Attorney at White Run. But supposedly, as far as I can tell, what the story behind the set is, is that there's some sort of royal wedding. And to celebrate it, they're holding a tournament. And we get all these people coming from all over to show off their stuff or mm -hmm. rob from the castle. Or Ooh. maybe they have some other things going on. So, yeah, it's very classical fantasy. Mm, very it, Game of thrones -y. Yeah, very reminiscent of Game of Thrones kind of stuff like that. And that's one of the reasons why I want to take a look at it. Because after doing the cyberpunk set last time, which was very different from what magic does, we just wanted to get way back to the roots ah. of some, some good old-fashioned magic. And there's at least one really cool mechanic in this set that I wanted to see how it plays out. Ooh, so right. without any further ado, we'll do a quick intro for this set. So let's get to talking about those mechanics. So the first mechanic I want to show off is called Fabled. Mm. So Fabled says what you do is if you pay the Fabled cost, first you do whatever it says up here. So like on Dance of Grace, target creature gains indestructible on of turn and you scry one. Sure. But if you cast it for Fabled, then you would transform this card and put it onto the battlefield attached to a creature. So Dance of Grace, for example, transforms into Paragon of Virtue, an enchantment aura, which says at the beginning of each end step you gain life, and it gives the creature plus one, plus one. So it kind of gives more bang for your buck for these instants. Yeah. So all of them, all of the cards with Fabled target either a creature or like you'll see in some others, they target a player. Like Hasty Intervention here says prevent all damage. That would be built to target player this turn. Also has Fabled. So what you can do is if you cast it for its Fabled cost, then it turns into Setting Up Camp. Enchant player at the beginning Ooh. of Enchanted Player's upkeep. That player creates a 1-1 white soldier token. So you prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. And you get this enchantment where you get a 1-1 every turn. Ah, that's so, pretty good. Yeah, it's very cool. There's at least one Fabled card in each color. And I'm really interested to see this kind of really unique and fun-looking take on dual face cards, which we haven't seen before. Yeah. And that's really what made me want to play the set in the first place, was kind of seeing that mechanic. Exactly. So, all right. And next on the list of mechanics, we have Adorned. So to take a look at Adorned, here we have Commoners Favored. It's a one mana one one with adorned. It says it gets plus two plus two as long as it's equipped and or enchanted. Ah, okay. So uh, adorned basically gives something a bonus as long as it's equipped or enchanted. And that actually works really well with the fabled mechanic because most of the fabled cards turned into auras mm. once they resolve. Mm -hmm. So very nice little combo there. So that's pretty cool. The next mechanic on the list is infiltrate. This is a mechanic that I'm very interested in. So here we can see an example of it with Captain of the Exiled. So infiltrate. Whenever huh. one or more attacking creatures you control aren't blocked, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So, for example, if you attack with three creatures and your opponent blocks two of them, but one of your creatures gets in, this guy still gets the bonus. Hey. So it's kind of like the flavor of people who are just coming to this tournament to maybe rob the rich, rob the castle, or whatever. They're trying yeah, to Yeah, they're just infiltrate. coming for the gold, man. Exactly. And there's a lot of little combos in the set that work with uh, infiltrate, such as... Deft Gold Snatch here, so it's two mana, two two, and it can't be blocked. Huh. So this guy, since he can't be blocked, as long as you're attacking with any infiltrate creature, you're gonna get the infiltrate. You're good, bonus. yeah, that's great. So, very nice. Next on the mechanics, we have Cripple. So here's a common Cripple card, Commoner's Justice. It's a five mana, destroy target creature. Its controller loses to life, but it has Cripple, and you may cast a spell for its Cripple cost if an opponent has lost life this turn. So yeah, this seems to kind of work well with Infiltrate. It's another kind of aggressive mechanic. It rewards you for being aggressive. Mm. So should be very influential on how we play the games and how we want to draft. Mm, I see. And finally, the last mechanic in the set is a very familiar one. Renown. Ah. So we saw Renown. First of all, we saw it in regular Magic. Then we saw it in Lorado. Then again, we saw it in Aner. And now it's here again. There very, we are. Very popular mechanic. So whenever it deals damage to a player, if it isn't renowned, put a plus one plus one counter on it, be on it, and it becomes renowned. So very simple, very cool mechanic, and that again rewards aggression. So we have infiltrate that rewards aggression, cripple that rewards aggression, and renowned that rewards aggression, mm. and adorned basically a rewards aggression because you want to be enchanting your creatures with bonuses that way. So. Yeah, it seems like a very aggressive set, but it's spread out to all the colors. And thankfully, this time around, unlike in Metropolis, blue is very much playable. So I am very much looking forward to playing a set with Curiosity 
At common, so whenever enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. I can't wait to put that on an unblockable creature. Mm -hmm. And there's also some other fantastic cards, such as Distracting Handmaiden. Like, it's just a better version of uh, if you played the uh, Time Spiral block, Saltfield Recluse. So it's a three mana, one three, just tap it, and target creature gets minus two, minus one until end of turn. If you have one of these out, your opponent can basically never attack. If you have two of these out, your opponent's dead. If you have three of them out, y you're basically the new king. Wow. So. All right. All right. How <laughs> distracting. Very good. And yeah, there's just so many. Uh, I'm just like social graces here. It's basically just a Gitaxian probe, as long as you cap cast it for its cripple cost. And of course, we have, since we're in a set that seems very much a tempo set and wants to have your opponent lose life in blue, we have Sunken Ambitions, returns a creature to its owner's hand, and they lose one life, basically just a Vapor Snag with a different name. Mm -hmm. So there's lots and lots of cool... I, I might be gushing a little bit here with all the cool blue cards, but that's just because... Yeah, well, I mean, we're finally getting a set with some good blue, you exactly. know? Exactly. I was just so... I was so sad it was basically unplayable in the last set, and now I'm really looking forward to seeing playing some good tempo and card advantage um, decks with this set. So Sounds good. So it should be a lot of fun. So what we'll do next is just to show off kind of the commons and uncommons of the set, Abby and I have made some exhibition decks uh -huh. to get a feel for what they're like. So we're going to start off with The Adorned versus The Cripplers. All right, see you then. All right, so here's the deck that I'll be playing for our first exhibition match. It's Green, White, Adorned. So if, as, if you've watched these exhibition videos before, then you know what Abby and I like to do is we kind of just find the mechanics and themes of the sets, and we just put a bunch of the commons and uncommons together to kind of just test out what those themes are like. Because and these decks aren't built to be perfect, they're not built to be optimized at all. Mm -hmm. We just want to get a feel of what the commons and uncommons of the set are like, so that way when we go into draft and sealed with the set, we'll have a better idea of what should guide our picks here. So as you can see, we have pretty much every common and uncommon uh, Dorn card in the set. We have a lot of auras, we have very good equipment here, just one mana, cast one man to equip gives plus one plus one and we also have our rare declare the mother bear oh. so it should be pretty cool looking forward to using our fabled cards to get a lot of auras onto our creatures and see if we can take down the abby's stuff before they manage to cripple us <laughs> all right here we are for round one of the tourney at white run exhibition for the adorned hey. versus the cripplers hey. So we have our opening hand here. It's not the greatest, we have, but we have a fabled card here. Really want to see how that plays out. We have a decent adorned guy, three drop, but it gets lifelink, so that's not bad. And we have one of the best auras in our deck, this one, Tranquil Endeavors, which gets plus two, plus two Vigilance, but if it ever gets knocked off, we can just return it from the graveyard to our hand. And we have both of our colors, and, you know, four mana is pretty good. That'll make sure that we, you know, hit our three drop, and maybe even four and five. So, yeah, it's, it's a little slow, but whatever. And Abby, you're going first. Yeah, I'm going first. Keeping your seven? Yeah. All right, a little scary, but whatever. Let's do this. Your turn. All right, so let's untap, see what we draw. We get Voyaging Devout. So three mana, three two adorned, as long as it's equipped or enchanted. Creatures with power less than its power can't block it. Seems good. All right, play forest and pass turn. All right, sounds good to me. So we two have currently two adorn three drops. Which one we play will depend on what Abby does. If she has nothing, then maybe we'll just toss this guy out. But if she kind of has more stuff, then maybe we'll play the lifelink one. Oh, good. So white run ordainer, two mana, one three. When enters the battlefield, gain four life. Seems good to me. We'll go ahead and do that. So we'll play the ordainer. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Wow, that's All right, interesting. one, two, three, four, and pass turn. You have four life off the bat. I see yeah, that. Yeah, it's like a lone missionary from Rise of the Eldrazi, except oh. instead of a 2-1, it's a 1-3. So. Hey, go ahead. And, wow, nothing on turn three either. Huh. Shh, it's okay. <laughs> okay, all right, whatever. Oh, well, we're just drawing gas here. So Silverwork Champion, five mana, four, four. As long as it's adorned, it gets plus two, plus two, and that's trample. That guy's going to get real big. So why don't we start off by attacking. So we'll attack with our 1-3. Is that okay? Yeah, I'll do one. Alright, down to 19, and during second main, since Abby has nothing, the creature's power less than his power can't block it. Yeah, we'll play our Voyaging Devout. That might be real good next turn. Pass turn. Alright. Because if Abby has nothing, then we can go ahead and equip this to this guy and make it into a 5-4. Oh boy, and actually, since this costs green, then we may be able to do this worse comes worse as well, if we absolutely need to. Although I'd like to save it for the following turn. All right, so I need to get some creatures down. So we're going to go ahead and get down with the uh, Harrowing Knight. Harrowing Knight. Sack creature. Gets plus two, plus two in the turn. It sure does. We'll see if Abby has any uh, tokens or whatever to synergize with that. All right, so let's go ahead and untap draw for turn. We got Hedge Knight. Just three mana, three, three. A lot of flavor text, too. 
go ahead and play our forest. So now we have to figure out what we're going to do this turn. So the other side of Seek Glory is this. It's Warforged Hero. So Enchanted Creature has Double Strike, and other creatures you control have First Strike. So that gives it Double Strike. That's pretty good if we cast it for the full Fabled, and it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. And it gives things First Strike. Yeah, I mean, that seems pretty good to me. The only other option that we have would be like casting this guy or casting this. I say we just go all out. So let's go ahead and we will cast Seek Glory. Okay. Targeting our Voyaging Devout. Is that okay? Sure. So it gets plus one, plus one, and gains First Strike. And Seek Glory comes into play. And then we will transform it into Warforged Hero to give it double strike and other creatures you control at first strike, so we'll attach that Whoa, to Whoa, who thing. gave Sansa to start the battle armor? <laughs> yeah, yeah, very familiar um, Game of Thrones stuff here. All right, so now our Voyaging Devout, 3-2, a double strike, plus one, plus one, so it's a 4-3, so let's go ahead and attack with our 4-3 double strike. <laughs> you have any blocks, Abby? Wow, <laughs> yeah, no, I'll take eight. That's... All right, take eight down to 11, and we'll fast turn to you. Great. And ooh, it might get even better next turn. And Abby can't block creatures with power less than it, so she can currently block it with the Harrowing Knight since it's back down to a 3-2, but does still have double strike and gives like our 1-3 first strike, so might hold off some of Abby's smaller things. Let's we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm going to put down a Visiting Dignitary. Oh, that's good. Yep, and I will take... I wonder which one you're going to take. Right, I want your Devout. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So you can go ahead and take it and untap it and attack. Wait, do you gain control? Yeah, you do untap it. Okay. Yep, it gains haste. Oh, boy. All right, so we're going to oh, go ahead and do no. that. Oh, and you have the combo. Yeah, <laughs> I do. So. Damn. All right. Yeah, well, so we're going to come in for beats. With everything? With everything, yeah. Yep, so coming with that yep. and that. So that's, oh, geez, that's really good. So this gives it double strike, so that'd be six, seven, eight, nine. And Abby's going to sacrifice it at the end of combat. Oh, man, this sucks. So the, the question is, do we just block here and save ourselves six life and just sacrifice our one three? Or... Do we... You're going to be losing two creatures to that, right? Yeah, then we lose two creatures, and Abby can start getting in with this the following turns. I think we'll just take the hit. Yeah, so no blocks. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Down to 15? Yes. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, and then uh, so we'll go to my second main phase. Yep. And I will sack the <laughs> uh, devout, so I'll give it back to you and you so can put it in your good. graveyard. Yep, and the auras go away. Yep, and the auras Barf. go away. Sorry, man. All right, fair enough. Wow, that was really good. Okay, you all set? Yeah, fast turns to go. All right, so let's untap, draw. So we get Lone Heroic, so it gives a creature plus two, plus two until the turn, and then it fables into... Exalted Charge, which says whenever it attacks, you create a 2-2 two, two white uh, knight that's tapped and attacking. So that's pretty good, but we are kind of on the back foot now. We do have this to block that. The only question is, what are we going to do about this 3-3? Three, three? That's just getting bigger and bigger. We don't have enough to cast Silverwork Champion. That's 5 mana. We could cast Hedge Knight. Hmm... Yeah, we're only going to be able to do one thing this turn, unfortunately. We can't, and we don't have enough to do the Fabled on this anyway. So the question is, do we cast Tranquil Endeavors and get ourselves a 3-5 that could block this? Or do we just start getting down more Royal, our Royal Guard? And I think the answer is we're going to cast the Royal Guard here. And the reason, for, and then we'll pass the turn back to Abby. Okay. And the reason we're casting the Royal Guard here is because even if we equipped up the White Run Ordainer with our Tranquil Endeavors and made it into a 3-5, Abby could still attack with this, we block with our 3-5, she'd sack this, and then it'd become a 5-5, five five, and we'd still lose our thing. And yeah, we could get back Tranquil Endeavors from the Graveyard eventually, but I'd rather just start adorning our Royal Guard and hopefully gain back some of the life we've lost, since if we can get a big life linker, that's another way we can win. Well, Alright, so we're going to go to our attack phase. Okay, coming in for attacks. Yeah. Well, um, if Abby has a trick, I don't really want to lose our guard, but I don't really mind, um, if she has a trick, losing our Ordainer. So we'll go ahead and block there. Okay. Right, and so no blocks for this thing, of course. Okay, and you so do have something. Yep, Art in Charge. Art in Charge. Wow, attacking creatures you control get plus one, plus oh, and you draw a card. Yep. Boom. Nice. All right, so we take four. Yes, you take four. All right, we take four. One, two, three, four. And White Run Ordainer dies, since this is a three, two now. Sorry. All right, you got anything else? Yes. All right, so I'm going to cast uh, Opportunistic Raiders for their cripple cost. Oh, jeez. 
All right, yep, since you, I lost life, you can cast it for a cripple, and he has haste, it's a 3-3 when it enters the battlefield, if it's your main phase. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase, followed by an additional main phase. Okay, Oops. so you don't get, so wait a minute, so Ardent Charge, attacking creatures you control, plus one plus, so that doesn't count for this, because it's not currently an attacking creature, but you can still attack with your 3-3 if you want. Yeah, I'll attack with my 3-3, sure. All right, so you get to go to another attack phase. Okay, yep, so we'll go to our next attack phase. Sure, yeah, it doesn't untap your creatures, that's kind of unfortunate, but yeah. it's still pretty good. Alright, and we'll take three. One, two, three. Take yeah. one. Okay, sounds good. And uh, my good. second main phase. Yeah, jeez, okay. And might as well. Wow, we are getting. It's on the Caravan here. Merchant. Caravan Merchant, yep. Probably not a great card, but again, we want to test out the cards. See yeah, what you like. know, whatever. See if there's any Here's hidden one. synergies. Wow, that was a beating of a turn right there. Yeah. Alright, well, we got our fifth mana. That's the good news. So what do we do here? We can adorn this guy with Lone Heroics. And then we also get Exalted Charge to create a tap 2-2. Two, two. But if we just made like a normal 2-2 two, two that wasn't tapped, that'd be so much better. Uh, or we could just play this guy who's a 4-4. Four, four. Maybe that's the best thing that we want. Although, here's the thing. This Harrowing Knight is just really good right now because if we block it, then Abby can sacrifice a creature and she'll kill whatever's blocking it. If we don't block it, Abby can just sacrifice all her other creatures and we're dead because we're only at 8 life. So we need to figure out what we're going to do. Hmm, so... Oh, okay, so looking at Tranquil Endeavors again, it gives it plus 2, plus 2, and Vigilance. So I think that has to be the play here. So we're going to do 1, 2, 3, and we'll cast Tranquil Endeavors. Okay. And we will target our Royal Guard. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so then we will attach to this, so that makes it a 4-5 lifelink, because it is adorned, Wow! and we will attack with it. We'll tap it for now to show it's attacking. So, do you block, or do you take 4? I'll take 4. Yeah, take 4 down to 8, and we go up to 12, thanks to its adorned lifelink. We'll untap it, and we'll pass the turn. Okay. Still have this, in case of emergency, and yeah, I mean, giving it vigilance, you know, that's that was huge there, because now we have a guy back to block, so maybe we'll be able to pull ourselves back in this game? All right, so we are gonna get some stuff rolling here. We're gonna oh boy, we're gonna rally these volunteers. Rally the volunteers, create two one one red soldier creature tokens with haste. Oh boy, wow, that's really good with harrowing knight. Man, <laughs> you get two of them. Jeez, okay, <laughs> and they have haste. Yeah, great. And they have haste, so uh, yeah, might as well go to attack base. Oh boy, and let me guess. Come in for them beats. Everybody, yeah, of course. All right, so here's the conundrum. So we have our guy. It's a 4-5 lifelinker, great. But if we if we block like this 3-3, three, three, Abby can just sacrifice the 3-3 three, three to this, and then we don't get the lifelink because it wouldn't deal any damage, and we take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All she'd have to do is sacrifice another thing, and we're dead. So I think what we have to do, if we block any of these, we're just dead. So I think what we have to do is we have to block here, and then we'll take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... And Abby can either sacrifice a ton of creatures to trade with our royal guard to make this thing big enough, we'll gain life, or she can sacrifice our harrowing knight to itself and we don't gain life. So I get that's the only thing that we can really do though that will let us win. So since this only gives plus two plus two, so yep, we will do that. All right, so I am actually going to sacrifice one of my tokens here to right, pump the some, harrowing knight. Yep, sacking a soldier to make the knight into a five five. Yep. <sighs> yep, so currently our guy's dying. So our question here is do we want to cast Lone Hero, or Lone Heroics on this to gain more life and to make Abby sacrifice another guy? Is that worth it? Yeah, so let's see, we're going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, gain 4, and so we'll be basically taking 4 down to 8. And then we'll probably just be playing this guy next turn. Uh, and then we might not even have this up anymore. Yeah, I think we just got to cast it. We're in a desperate situation. So we're going to cast Lone lone Heroics on our Royal Guard. Give it plus two, plus two. So it goes from two, three to a four, five to a six, seven. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, in response, I'll second another, another token. <laughs> yeah, that's what we figured. All right, that's fine. So we'll take in... Are you good now? Can we go to damage? Yeah. Okay, so we'll take are one. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
We gain six of it back, so we basically take one, and then our royal guard dies, and the endeavors goes to the graveyard. So we'll remember that's there. Okay, great. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Fantastic. Abby only has one card in hand. That is good to know. And now you're going to find out what it is. We're going to know what it is. All right. I'm going to cast this for its fabled cost. Oh, Twilight Raid. All right, so target player loses one life, and you scry one. Yes. So why don't you uh, just go ahead and toss that over here. And I will scry. All right, so let's make this into Outlaw Woods so we lose a life. So at the beginning of our upkeep, we lose one life. Great. Okay, I will keep that on top. So you keep the scry on top? Yes. Okay. And is it our turn? Yeah. Great. All right, so untap, draw. Lose life. Lose a life during our upkeep. Dalish Archer's first strike as long as it's equipped and or enchanted. Okay, that's fine. The only thing we can do is we could pay three to return that and then get it back. Pay two. I mean, all we can really do, we could cast this, block here again, and then Abby's kind of forced to either sack or trade, and she probably sack this one. They take one, two, three, four, five. I mean, it's better than just playing our champion and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, actually, if we play the champion, then we could block here, and then we'd eat a creature. Yeah, I really just don't see any other way out. I think we're going to have to try that. So we're going to play our Silver Rook Champion and pass turn to you. Okay, sounds good to me. Man, I thought we were doing really well at the beginning there when we had our Devout and then we had our Life Linker. But man, you're just, uh, your tokens in this, this Harrowing Knight hey. has been insane. It happens, it happens. All right, so we're going to go attack base. Okay. We got blocks. I think we're going to stick to the plan of blocking the 3-3 three, three with our 4-4. Four, four. And even if Abby sacks everything, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Well, she doesn't even have to sack, but we'll just take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, go down to 2, and then we'll go down to 1, but... I mean, that's... Then you're dead in your upkeep. Well, we're not dead. We go down to 1 in our upkeep. Oh, okay, okay. So, is that okay? Mm, yeah, your block is okay, but... But... Oh, no. Okay, so I'm going to play Surge of Duty for its fabled cost. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so Surge of Duty for its fabled. Yep. So who are you targeting? So I'm going to target the Harrowing Knight. Sure, why not? And it, since you paid it for, with its surge cost, it becomes Undeterred Valiant, so it gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, and it gets first strike. Okay, so that's a plus five, plus five, and first strike on the Harrowing Knight. <laughs> yep. All right, so I take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I'm dead. And you're dead. Wow, got crushed. <laughs> Jeez. All right, well... Yeah, we, again, we don't really have sideboards for these matches because we don't. We want to just see how the cards play on their own. So we'll see if we can bring it back in round two and uh, get adorned instead of getting crushed. Yeah. All right, here we are for round two of the adorned versus the cripplers. Mm -hmm. We have a pretty good hand here. We have three lands, as you can see, both colors. We have a good two drop, adorned guy. Good three drop, ramps us. Not bad. We needed a lot of mana, as our deck showed us last time. Another three drop, adorned one. And we have something to adorn our things with. Seaclory was pretty good last time. So, yeah, we're keeping, and we're on the play this time. And, Abby, you're keeping your seven? Yeah, I'm keeping. All right, well, we'll start with the forest and then pass turn. All right, I'll take that. So our plan right now is to go turn to this. Probably, depending on how many lands we draw, we'll either do this if Ooh. we don't. And if we do draw lands, we'll do the other one, probably. All right, we got Voyaging Devout. Oh, new turn three play. All right, so we'll go two mana and cast Venerated Knight and pass turn. Okay. Currently just so. a vanilla 2-2. Two -two. But that might change at some point in the future. Oh, um, will it? So I think we'll definitely cast this guy next. It is kind Caravan of... Merchant. Caravan Merchant. <laughs> yeah, not the most impressive of commons, but whatever. Hey, you can sack it for mana. That's yeah, that's true. You, good. you could cast a five drop next turn. That is a little bit scary. Yeah. All right, we have a Mercenary Lancer here. Four mana, three, three gets plus two, plus two, as long as it's equipped. You know, now that we have this four drop, and we have technically this four drop... And we kind of just want to cast more things. And Abby's kind of ought to a slow start here. Maybe we just want to do this this turn. Yeah, you know, that seems good to me. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to attack with our knight first. Are you going to block with your merchant? Mm, I mean, you could have something. I could have something. I'll take two. Okay, take two. So we're attacking there because we just don't want Abby. It's a little scary if she casts something for five next turn. And we will cast our Satisfied Gleaner. So when okay. it enters the battlefield, we can search a library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle. So we'll go ahead and pass turn to you as we do that. We will get a Plains, and we will put it onto the battlefield, tapped. So, again, it might have been better to do this. If I mean, if we played this, and then we draw land naturally next turn, then we could have gone Devout into Fabled Seat Glory, which would have been great. But if we didn't draw land, then I'm happier that we played this. So... All right, so we're going to rally some volunteers again. Sure. Some more red soldiers. Sounds good. Yeah. 
There's the familiar friends. Uh -huh. <laughs> they were pretty good last time, but now we have two two and a one one, so not as scary. I'd say they're still pretty scary. All right, you got anything else? No, nope, go ahead. All right, no sacrificing caravan merchant. Untap, draw. Not yet, anyways. Not yet. All right, well, we did draw land, but we shuffled our library, so who knows what we would have drawn. So the question is, what do we play? Do we play the Voyaging Devout, or do we play the Mercenary Lancer? So this guy's a bigger thing, which is nice, but this one can't be blocked by creatures of power less than it, which is pretty good as well. Hmm... Well, you know, I think what we're going to do it might seem a little strange, but I think we're going to cast Mercenary Lancer here. The reason we're doing that, it uses our mana better. It's four drop instead of three. This way, if we draw a land next turn, we have six mana, we can play two guys. So I just think that we uses our mana a bit better. So the only question is, do we attack? And I think the answer is no, because I don't want Abby to uh, mm -hmm. trade off her soldiers with... I mean, I don't want to call them useless, but her lower soldiers for the night, which could get bigger eventually if we draw an equipment or something. So. Yeah, you know what it is? And I like having our Gleaner back on defense as a 1-2. Very helpful at this yeah, point. Yeah, see? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play Opportunistic Raiders. I mean, it's ah. not the best. This isn't really the best uh, use of it because yeah. I'm not going to be attacking with it or anything. But Ooh, no attacks? No. Wow. What is your hand? Ugh. If you have to play just as just a 3-3, three, three, that's yeah, not so not, great. It's not that bad, but okay. uh, go ahead. All right, well, I'm feeling pretty good about this then. So it's untap, draw, planes. Nice. So that's exactly what we kind of planned for here. The question is, do we go ahead and just seek glory, or do we get down our two guys? Mm, Abby, what does this mean, that she's just trying to build up an army here? Maybe we should try and respond by um, getting an army of our own. I think we'll do that. So we'll play a Royal Guard, okay. and we'll also play a Voyaging Devout, and we will pass turn to you. Oh, so okay. the re reason we're doing this is one, again, if, if Abby's trying to build up an army here, we want to have you know some blockers ready in case she tries something crazy. And also, this way, if we draw like an equipment or another cheap aura or something, we can Fabled onto the Lancer or one of these guys, and then we could maybe cast another aura next turn and just get in with a bunch of Adorn guys. So has a bigger upside, I think. All right, come in for beats. Ooh, attacking this turn. All right, well, this is scary because Abby's attacking, and we know she has a lot of cripple cards in her deck, so if we lose life, maybe she's maybe her goal here is not, you know, it's just to get us to lose one life, and then she can cast something for cripple. Oh, boy. All right, so what are we going to do here? I think we're going to make some blocks, of course. So let's go ahead, and we'll block the 1-1 one, one with the 1-2. That's a pretty easy block. I think, actually, I mean, there's a lot of easy blocks here, which is why this is kind of scary. If Abby has the... We saw the instant last time they gave plus one plus zero to all of her creatures and she drew cards. If she has that, oh, then we are just going to get wrecked. Is there a way we can block so that way, even if she does have that, we're not going to get wrecked? I mean, not really. So I think we just kind of have to, to go for it here. So we're going to go ahead and block the other 1-1 one, one with our 2-2. Two, two, and we'll block her 2-1 with our 2-3. And we'll block our, her 3-3 three, three with our 3-2. So everything's blocked. Okay, well, okay? you were right. I mean, oh, I don't no, know I didn't want to be right. <laughs> all right, art in charge, so they all get plus one, plus O, oh, and you draw a card. Yes. All right, fair mm -hmm. enough. All right, is that okay? Is uh, So I guess everybody's going to trade now. Yep, looks like everybody's trading. Ugh. Is that okay with you, or do you got anything else? Nope, nothing else. All right. So all my guys dead, and all your guys dead. Oh. Uh, I mean, we're still left with Mercenary Lancer, and we have this in our hand, so it's not a horrible position. All right, go ahead. Go ahead? No <laughs> follow-up? No. Oh, I like that. Okay, so let's untap, draw. Got a planes. It's not very good. Don't think we have anything in our graveyard. It's three black is a little scary, though. Like, if we go for Fabled on the Lancer and Abby has a kill spell in response, then we are, then we're, then Abby has four cards in hand? Oh, uh, then we're just probably dead. Hmm. I mean, we were right about her having the Assault Charge before. I think she has to have something here, so we're just going to attack with our 3-3. Three, three. Is that okay? Just attacking? Just attacking. All right, well, I don't want to take that, so... Ah, uh, okay, you do have, whew, yes. do have a removal spell. Okay, so left for Carrion, destroying our 3-3. Three, three. Yep. All right, deal four damage to it, and we'll pass turn to you. All right, that's good to me. <sighs> looks well, kinda, that looks kind of weird, though, you having all that mana open. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> well, who knows what's going on. I but yeah, don't. I'm glad we didn't do this for sure, but now Abby has four cards in hand to R1. We'll see what she has, though. 
Pass the turn, so I go. Pass the turn. Oh. Now you're the one who has a lot of mana, is not doing anything. Yeah. What's going on? I don't know. You don't know what's in my hand. Pass to you. Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh, okay. This is Fast turns over here. Game, <laughs> game of passing over here. All mm -hmm. right. All right. I'm still going to pass it back, though. Really? Yeah, you didn't do anything. Uh, you saying you didn't do anything makes me think you have a lot of reactive cards in your hand. But we have something this turn, so we'll play uh, Lord's Griffin. Oh, wow. It's a 1-3 flying go. <laughs> we'll definitely won't be wasting this on that, because, I, again, based on how Abby's playing, I think she has a ton of reactive cards in her hand, and that would we wouldn't even get a fabulous bonus if uh, it resolved. And yes, I did say fabulous bonus. All right, I will pass the turn so I go. Wow. I right. love drawing land. What this says to me is, one, Abby's drawing some lands, and two, well, first we'll attack with the griffin. You take one? Yeah, I'll take one. That's All right, fine. and two, she has removal spells, and she just doesn't want to waste one on the griffin just yet, so go ahead. It's too cute. <laughs> yeah, sure, that's what's going on. Also, Abby only has one red. Oh, now she has two red. Okay. Well, now maybe we've un she's unlocked some cards in her hand, but we'll see what she has. Maybe. Whoa. Okay. Oh, God. What's this? Bun -da -da. Empty the barracks. Let's empty them barracks. Wow. All right, so you create five soldiers? Yes. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> There's the wow, that's really good, especially for a common. Jeez. And they all have haste. And they all have haste. Which yep. Is pretty ridiculous. Man. All right, coming in? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, okay, this is a sorcery, so we'll take one, two, three, four, five. Uh, All set? Yeah, go ahead. All right, untap, draw. Tended Knight. All right, well, that's pretty good. So what is the other side of Sea Glory again? Ah, uh, yes, he gives it double strike and other creatures first strike. So, mm, I mean, that's fine. It's okay at um, kind of saving us life, but I think this guy should be good enough for that. So if we play this guy, then we go to block one, two, we'll take three. Yeah, I'm not too concerned. So let's continue attacking the air. You gonna take one? Yeah, I'll take one. All right, and then during second main, do one, two, three, and we'll cast Attended Knight. Okay. And we'll pass it back to you as we create our soldier creature token. Oh, all right. All right, there's our soldier. Doesn't have haste like your guys, but whatever. So we have our two, two, and our one, one back to block these guys. Hopefully they'll be good enough. I, I mean, again, we could have cast Seek Glory on the Griffin. It'd get in for another one damage with Double Strike, and it would give uh, this guy First Strike. Be better at holding back these guys, but I just think that's too much of a waste. If we're going to win this game, we're going to need to slam this on something big, not a Griffin. Visiting Dignitary. Oh, jeez. All right, yes. who are you getting control of? Give me your... Give me your Attended Knight. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. Oh, man. Everyone's coming in. Of course. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, the Dignitary doesn't have haste, but one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, well, we'll definitely just do what this knight was going to do. We'll block one, so we take one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Down to nine. Take it. All right, so this, the soldiers kill each other. Take your knight back. Thanks. <laughs> All set? Yep. All right. We got to get some good here. Untap, draw. White run, ordainer. Okay, that's not bad. So... Now I think attacking is bad. Abby's at 16, we're at 9. She has so many dudes. So we're going to go ahead and cast this. We'll cast White Run Ordainer. Enters battle through the game 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 13. Okay. And pass turn. All right. Again, still not casting this because we need this to perform some heavy duty if we're going to win this game. We need it to be on a really good Adorn creature. And we've actually won... Two, three, four, f well, we've already seen a lot of our Adorn creatures and they're dead. So hopefully we can draw one soon. All right, so come in for beats. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, at least you only have... I know you only have a one of all the cards, so I don't think you have another Ardent Charge? Oh, boy. Well, we're going to have to block here. <laughs> Something's weird, but we're going to have to block. So this thing is something first strike. Something snail's funny. Yeah, something smells real funny. But we'll block the 2-2, two -two, and then we'll just block, uh, block a bunch of 1-1s, one I guess. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, but... Uh... But, uh, oh, what? I'll cast Surge of Duty. Oh, uh, with Fable, there without. I'm actually going to cast it without its uh, Fable cost, because that just gives me pl one more plus one plus one. That's true, yeah, the token, because the other side just gives it first strike, and what are you casting it on? So I am going to cast it on one of the not-blocked soldiers. Okay, so putting it there temporarily. Okay, yeah, that makes sense if you're casting it on a not-blocked soldier, because then, you know, who cares about the 1-1 one -one having first strike? Alright, All right, so just to make things clear, these three are blocked. I take one, two, 
And then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I take nine down to four. And then your three guys die. So we're not dead. That's the good news. Okay. You're not dead yet. Well, that is fair. And let's get rid of the surge of duty so we don't get confused. All right, well, hmm. Good. Abby's out to two cards. She has two one ones, and we have plenty of blockers. I'm a little confused, I gotta say. All right, we have Dalish Archer, has first strike as long as it's equipped and or enchanted. I mean, that's fine. We'll play it as just another guy. But I guess we should start attacking. I mean, we can't afford to... Um, we can't afford to just stay back here. So we'll attack with our Attended Knight. And I guess we'll attack with our Griffin as well. For three? Yeah, we'll attack for three. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, fine. All right, and again, may, I'll pass turn back to Abby. Maybe we should have been casting the Fabled and Seek Glory. I just, we would have only gotten in for a little bit more damage with like the Griffin or something, and giving our guys first strike isn't that important when Abby's guys are so small, so I think we should still just save it. Hope we get a bigger dude with the Dorned or something. All right, so I'm going to go ahead Commoner's Justice, your, uh, your knight. Oh, no. All right, destroy target creature, its controller loses two life. All right, knight down, so I'm down to two. Okay. And then I'm going to sway the naive on oh your Dalish archer. So target creature deals damage equal to its power to its controller. Archer, you betrayer! We're yeah. down to zero. Dirty, dirty traitor. And we're dead. Wow, we got crushed. You did. You got wrecked. Man. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, neither was I, honestly. I'm never expecting this, and it happens almost every week. Well, there were so many good synergies. Like, when we were just kind of throwing your deck together with the commons mm. and uncommons, I don't think we really noticed all the token synergies that you had in the deck. I guess not. We just kind of put them in the deck because they were like, oh, here's some common cards in red. Let's throw them in there and see what they're like. But then they really came together. Yeah, token for the wreckage, man. Yeah, I mean, the card that was it was X and red, red, and made X tokens that common, that was insane. The card that mm -hmm. made two tokens, and then the, the, the three, three that you sacrifice to give plus two, plus two, and that combined with the dignitary that lets you gain control of a creature until end of turn, oh, man. Pretty good. And since I really, unless, I mean, I had a bunch of adorned creatures that game, but the, when they weren't adorned, they were just not that great, to be honest. Right. So, and I was... I, I mean, I kind of had the, the problem where I drew my adorned creatures and nothing to adorn them with, and I also had this stupid Seat Glory stuck in my hand the whole game doing nothing when nothing wanted to really be adorned with it. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's more potential for adorn there, but definitely want to keep in mind that the cripple cards and the aggressive cards and the token cards are very good in this set. Yes, it's something to look out for. All right, so what Abby and I will do is we'll be back next time with another exhibition set, and that time we'll be playing Infiltrators versus Renowned Warriors. Sounds good, see you then.